Hi there, and welcome back to Conversations with Father Greg. Well, I don't know if you're ready or not, but one way or the other, Christmas is just about a week away. In today's episode, we have a homily for Sunday, December 18th, 2022, which is the fourth Sunday in the season of Advent. Let's turn our attention to a reading from Matthew's Gospel. Matthew writes, Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When Jesus' mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and she named him Jesus. The Gospel of Christ May I speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, hi there, everyone. I don't know if I've ever mentioned before that my favorite flower is the crocus. Do you know what I love about the crocus? You can see them begin to push their way through the snow as early as March. Long before you ever see a blade of grass growing, you can spot the colorful petals of the tiny crocus bursting through the snow-crusted ground. But you see, the crocus isn't simply a burst of color on a snowy day. It's much more than that. Each blossoming crocus is a symbol of hope that winter is coming to an end and that spring is around the corner. Before the first tulip blooms and long before gardens are full of color, the crocus breaks through the snow. This is why I've always considered the crocus to be a symbol of hope. Today, our readings are full of another kind of hope. 800 years before the birth of Christ, the prophet Isaiah predicted the birth of a child who would change the world. Isaiah tells us that this child would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isaiah's words are like a crocus, promising something that is on its way, but is not yet here. In our reading from Matthew's Gospel, we see Isaiah's prophecy being fulfilled in a very familiar story. Mary and Joseph were engaged, but as yet unmarried. Matthew tells us, almost in passing, that Mary was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Joseph had a dream in which God revealed to him that Mary was pregnant and that she would give birth to a child who would offer people redemption. Matthew concludes this portion of his story about Jesus by saying that this all happened so that Isaiah's prophecy could be fulfilled, so that in the person of Jesus Christ, God would be with humanity in a new and unique way. Before we go much further, I'd like us to consider Mary and Joseph. Historically, we know that Mary would have been about 14 years of age, and Joseph was probably a little bit older. Imagine a pregnant teen and her fiancé starting their life together. Add Mary's angelic apparition and Joseph's vision of God doing something new in their lives. Imagine how terrifying and overwhelming it could have appeared. Yet despite the uncertainty and sheer unusual nature of the situation, they both stepped forward in faith. 
In so doing, they became vehicles through which God did something spectacular for the very first time. I'd also like us to spend a few minutes today focusing on this concept of Jesus as Emmanuel, or God with us. I think one of the dangers of the Christmas story is that it can become so familiar that we begin to take it for granted. If there's one part of Christmas that I think we often take for granted, it's the concept of God in our midst, of God being with us in a physical, tangible way. I love the way that John's Gospel describes this idea of God with us. John describes Jesus as God becoming flesh and blood and moving into the neighborhood. In the person of Jesus Christ, God was no longer far off and remote. Jesus was God in person, walking, eating, sleeping, teaching, and healing. In the person of Jesus Christ, we see God assuming a physical body and coming to humanity, seeking out a relationship with us. Not only that, He did not come in power, in wealth, or as a conqueror. He was born to a teenage girl in a stable. This is what it means for God to be with us, and it's not a limited time offer. We're told that after the resurrection, God's Spirit would continue to journey with us. This concept of Emmanuel of God coming to join us, means that we can have an encounter with God that is not dependent on our performance. It's not about us saying the right prayers, being in the right place, practicing the right traditions in exactly the right way, or even being the right kind of person. In fact, all through the Gospels we read about Jesus getting in trouble for eating with outcasts and sinners. And this is God in human form. At Christmas, we are reminded that God seeks us out so that he can have a relationship with us. God comes to us without waiting for us to approach him. That's what it means when we use terms like Emmanuel or Incarnation. God approaches us, seeking us out. All we have to do is decide how we're going to respond. Today, we sit on the veritable cusp of our Christmas celebrations. We're almost there. In a little less than a week, whatever has not been bought, wrapped or mailed, we'll simply have to wait until after Christmas. Let's enjoy time with family and friends. Let's savor our traditions. But let's not forget what happened that first Christmas. God did something new and radical. He showed up in person, reaching out to us so that we might get to know God better. As much as we fondly remember the past and savor the present, Christmas also calls us to look ahead to what radical new thing that God might be doing in our midst. Let's pray. God of grace, give us the faith of Joseph to see the Spirit's work where the world sees only shame, to listen to the promise, and to awaken to the cry of life renewed and love reborn. Through Jesus Christ, the one who is to come. Amen.